Hello, welcome back to the JARG 300 um, Geographical Data Analysis video series for WVU. We are continuing on with spatial autocorrelation. What we are doing here now is looking at a the first main, well really the main test that we'll be using in this class. There are many approaches, many tests that have been developed. What I'm presenting here is the most common statistical inferential statistics test to measure and assess spatial autocorrelation. It has basically two variants, Morant I and what is either called local Morant I or LISA, local indicator for spatial autocorrelation. The, so what is um, Moran's eye test. It is, simply put, if you Remember that correlation. There is actually a measure of correlation. We will see that actually in a couple weeks. But we, we have this measure of correlation. It is then applied as Moran's I, a place, and the average value, so I would say between the value or the attribute and the average of its neighbors using whatever weight matrix we picked, whether that is the con a contiguity distance, threshold, nearest neighbor, however we have defined neighbor, Moran's I is the correlation between the value in a place and the average of its neighbors across every single unit within the study area, across every single place. This, ten, this is typically presented with a scatter plot. And we can then see, okay, here are the places that's high, that's low, and so on. And their neighbors are high, their neighbors are low. And what this does is if that value is or is near zero, there's no autocorrelation. If it is positive, if it is positive, there's a positive autocorrelation. If it's negative, there's a negative autocorrelation. The main thing here is you will get the value up for i you will get a p-value. Now, remember back to null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, p-value, that sort of thing. The null hypothesis is there is no autocorrelation. Or you could say the null hypothesis is that i is going to be equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis is that it is not equal to zero, that there is autocorrelation, whether positive or negative. The probability the data goes with the null hypothesis, that i is zero, that there is no autocorrelation. 
that is ultimately what Moran's eye is going to be telling you. There is, though, in many cases, that's good to know, there's autocorrelation. And you can look at the value of i to say is it positive or negative. So you may find that it's positively autocorrelated. As far as that goes, that can be useful. Just to again think of current, somewhat current events. If you are encountering a new disease, kind of like COVID, and you see autocorrelation among the rates in different counties, different areas, it may be reasonable to assume it is an infectious disease that can travel from one place to another. However, from a public health perspective, you might actually want to address the places that have, high, that have higher areas. Or you may want to look at the places where there's low areas, low values next to low values, high values next to high values. That is what a positive autocorrelation implies. If all you have is that number, or that couple numbers, I and the, its associated p-value, you don't know where to send help. You don't know where there are high values next to other high values. You don't know where to go to find positive lessons of what can be used as mitigation strategy, where there's low values next to other low values. That is why we have LISA as well, the local indicator to say where in my study area, where do I find the clusters of high values? Where do I find the clusters of low values? If you need to know where you find high versus low, that's where LISA comes in. And that's why I have this here. What Lisa gives you is it applies a local test to look at the values in each place. And it may say here in the southern area, I have high values. Over here, I might have low values. So this would be high 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 values next to other high values. Low next to low values. Now when running a, Moran, a local Moran's eye or LISA test, you, it will identify up to, really up to five different kinds of places. Places that do not contribute to the average or to the final statistic Either they have average values or the neighbors have average values, neither high nor low. If you have positive autocorrelation, most you, uh, you're going to have areas with high high and low low. Those are areas of local positive autocorrelation of either low values or high values. You can, even when there is a overall what's called a global trend that says there is positive spatial autocorrelation. It is possible to have localized areas that go against that. There will be locally negative autocorrelation or local outliers. So this may be a high value, but it is on average, surrounded by low values. High next to low. And we could have the reverse. 
a low value, but its neighbors have, on average, higher values. So we can have these local outliers, even when there is a positive autocorrelation overall or global trend. There is one more element to this, which I will illustrate in class on Monday. How do we assess that significance? If you remember, the, the inferential statistics approach. We, had, we figured out how to, we got our null hypothesis, we have our alternative hypothesis. Then we need to get the distribution of the statistic, whether that is the i value here or each of the local values, the distribution of those statistics under the null hypothesis. It so happens that that is dependent upon the spatial weights matrix. How many neighbors a place has affects the distribution of that value under the null hypothesis if there's no relationship. Instead of doing a mathematical formula, what typically happens is something called Monte Carlo simulations. We've actually seen this before, Monte Carlo simulations. And what it does is it takes the values, takes the values of the underlying variable that we're studying, income for example, and scrambles them. So if we're looking at the state of West Virginia, it may take Kanawha County's income and assign it to Preston County. Preston County's value gets assigned to Cabell County. Cabell County's goes over to Jefferson. Jefferson goes to Mingo. Mingo's comes to Monongalia. Monongalia goes to um, Pocahontas and so on and so forth. And we just scramble everything. If everything is scrambled, we can assume there's probably no real autocorrelation going on. The values are picked randomly. Figure out the I value of that scramble. Repeat that over and over and over again. 999 times is fairly common. But thank goodness for computers. Repeat that over and over and over again. And then we build up that distribution of the I statistic under the null hypothesis. And we can take the actual values where they are. So what's the I value for Mon County value in Mon County, Preston and Preston, Cabell and Cabell, and so on. Then we can compare in a ranked list. If I only have two random values out of my list of a thousand that are equal to or higher then I can say my p-value, so say, okay, my, I have my value of the real data plus two more that were random scrambles, three out of a thousand. That gives me a p-value of 0 0.003 or three out of 1,000. That is how it is often calculated for Moran's I statistical significance. And that's how this p-value comes about, through that Monte Carlo testing of randomly scrambled data. I will illustrate this, as I said, in Monday's class. As always, if you have questions, please feel free to ask either in class or during, um, by email, or during office hours for that matter. So have a good one. I will see you at the next video. Thank you for watching.